This episode is sponsored by Shipyard Shenanigans. That's a comedy podcast done by my friend James Tiffany. And if you want to check it out, it's available on all good podcast platforms. Hello and welcome back to Film Pro Productivity and Success, the podcast that helps film professionals and other creative people to live a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 88, The Other Pandemic Victim Mentality. Now last week I talked about something that is a little bit more oblique to productivity but which if you fall into the habit of it or fall for a perpetrator of it will waste your time and ultimately damage your productivity. If you get into the habit of it yourself it will for sure ruin your reputation as I say that episode is all about chasing clout or influence and popularity and it's available to listen to right now. But victimhood was seductive, a release from responsibility and caring. Fear would be transmuted into weary resignation. Failure would no longer generate guilt, but instead would spawn a comforting self-pity. That's from the novel Intensity by Dean Kuntz. I've wanted to tackle this topic for really a very long time now, but it was difficult to even get started on it. Just raising the subject of victim mentality is a dangerous business because those that buy into it vehemently defend their position forcefully, passionately and intensely. They will fight against you and that position is born out of their negative experiences and their negative bias for those experiences and other negative influences on their life. The thing is, I really can't let this go on any further. Not that I think my talking about it is going to change the world. I I doubt it will, but it might just help a few of you that are listening to get ahead in the world or at least get past whatever victim-based thinking is holding you back. Victim mentality has gotten out of hand these days. And as someone who hosts a productivity podcast, which aims to help my fellow creatives, I can't just sit by and let this pass. And the quote I used a minute ago by novelist Dean Kuntz describes the inner thoughts of someone with victim mentality in perfect detail. I think victimhood was seductive, he says, a release from responsibility and caring. Fear would be transmuted into weary resignation. Failure would no longer generate guilt, but instead would spawn a comforting self-pity. Do you recognise any of that? Because without going any further, I'd say that all of that is spot on and accurate. That is the mindset of those who engage in playing the victim. It is, however, simply a crutch. It's an opt-out card. You see, victim mentality allows you a free card to believe that your lack of success is not your fault. It's not because you misjudge something or you didn't work hard enough or because you are an asshole that nobody likes and you fucked it up. By having something or someone or some group to blame, you are giving yourself a free pass and allowing the poor me attitude to take over so that the next time you face a similar situation, you won't have learned from your last error and you won't try harder. You can wallow again in this self-pity that says, I wasn't successful because of the world or some specific group is working against you. We all have our ups and downs in life. Bad things might happen to you or people you know on a daily basis, but there are some people who claim it is never their fault. They argue that they have no control over the tough situations and problems they encounter. It is simply always happening to them. People who constantly blame other people or situations for the events in their lives have a victim mentality. They say it's not my fault because everything that happens to them is the fault of others. They constantly complain about the bad things that happen in their lives. They don't take any responsibility, asserting that the circumstances aren't in their control. People who have a victim mentality have usually suffered through trauma or hard times, but haven't developed a proper way to cope. As a result, they develop a negative view of life because they don't think anything is their fault. They have little or no sense of responsibility in their life. We must stop this incessant victimhood mentality. Somebody else will not fix things. 
Somebody else will not make me healthy. Somebody else will not make me happy. These things are my responsibility, not my neighbours, not the governments, not the church or the civic club. Joel Salatin, unquote. So what's attractive about being a victim? Why is it so prevalent? Well, there are some benefits to playing the victim that should be considered. Victims, of course, have no accountability. Being accountable for your life means you're in the driver's seat. You take responsibility, and that can be quite frightening to someone who has a victim mentality. They would have to admit that life isn't just the result of the actions of others. Taking responsibility bursts the protective bubble of victimhood. Playing the victim also brings in a secondary gain, such as sympathy, attention or access to medication or funds, and some people's problems continue because of those secondary benefits. Of course, someone with a victim mentality might not even realise they are getting these benefits. And victimhood also satisfies unconscious needs when it comes from past trauma or other negative experiences as they unconsciously seek validation and help from others. They play the poor me card constantly and this can generate sympathy and help from others that makes them feel better. Although in my experience, it will eventually make them less likeable and really quite unpleasant to be around. I try to keep those sort of people with a victim complex out of my life as they are to consuming basically of my time and energy and they don't bring very much to the table. And I'm obviously taking kind of a cold view of this as this is a productivity um, podcast, but I'm calling it as I see it. Lastly, playing the victim card will mean that you will avoid taking risks. Projecting blame onto others is a key part of the victim mentality. It's a way to avoid being truly vulnerable and taking risks. When it comes to finding success, though, sometimes you have just got to move out of your comfort zone to get things done. Now, I have to admit for sure that I've gotten into this way of thinking in the past myself many times before, and that even now I occasionally find that I'm having to check myself to get out of this all-too-easy rut of victim mentality. The poor me attitude particularly annoys me, in fact, if I start to feel that way within myself as I know it's not really going to get me anywhere, if, if you get what I'm saying. I talked about it to an extent in the first episode of this mini-season. I've, I've had a series of negative experiences, particularly when it comes to filmmaking and funding in Scotland, which is a colossal waste of time, by the way. I literally wasted years trying to get a foothold, but eventually realised that I was wasting my time and that I would never get funded. Uh, Film Scotland, back when it was called something other, uh, some other thing, I don't remember what it was called, uh, they even told me at the time on completion of my first feature, my only feature, I hasten to add, that they will never fund me. And that negative experience really made my life pretty miserable for quite a few years afterwards. And of course, played out to be true as it happens. <laughs> they, they don't like funding people. So I should mention that at some point, victim mentality could be based on re reality uh, and that there are really genuine victims in, in the world. And of course... <laughs> It's cut to the chase here. Being unsupported in filmmaking is very much a first world problem and pales beyond insignificance when balanced against the true horrors of the world. But it made me pretty darn miserable for a very long time. I put a lot into it, into it and really didn't get very much back. And this is a, a podcast specifically targeting people working in the creative world. So forgive me for using that as an example. But um, I eventually I accepted that the only way for me to get my films made was to ignore the funding bodies and just continue to do it myself. By, by doing that, I put myself in control. And as also happened with the car problem that I talked about a few episodes ago, boxing it away in my mind um, like that, this allowed me to move past it and start once more to get things done. Victim mentality literally kills productivity in that sense. Of course, it's normal to be unsatisfied in some parts of your life, but it's important too to look at the bigger picture. If you notice similar patterns across different areas of your life, you might have a victim mentality. The first step to solving that problem is to identify and acknowledge it. Look for these signs in yourself to see if you might have adopted a victim mentality. One, you blame others for the way your life is. Two, 
you truly think life is against you. Three, you have trouble coping with problems in your life and feel powerless against them. Four, you feel stuck in life and approach things with a negative attitude. Five, you feel attacked when someone tries to offer helpful feedback. Six, feeling bad for yourself gives you relief or pleasure. Seven, you attract people who blame others and complain about their life. And eight, it's difficult for you to examine yourself and make changes. If you recognise any of these signs and you want to kill that nasty habit of playing the victim, then here are a few pointers on how to get yourself out of it. Victim mentality is a learned behaviour. In other words, it's not something you're born with. It's something you learn in a social environment. It could be learned from family members or as the result of trauma. However, you have the power to overcome it. It's the high-level thinking I've talked about many times before on this podcast. Try and extricate yourself from your unfortunate circumstances by taking action. This leads me to my next pointer, taking responsibility. You are the only one who controls your actions. You might not be able to control others, but you control how you react to them. You control who you spend your time with and where. Realise your potential and get into the driver's seat of life. And that reminds me of a thing I've said many times before in the show. You become the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're hanging around with people with the same sort of mentality, I mentioned it in that list, you attract people who blame others and complain about their life. If you're surrounding yourself with people with the same mindset, you're going to find it extremely difficult to get out of it yourself. Next on my list is self-care and compassion. Victim mentalities are subconsciously adopted as a way to cope, often from past trauma. So be compassionate with yourself to aid your recovery. Practice self-care and self-love. Journaling can be a, a tool to work you through your feelings or even just brain dumps and, and things like that. Meditation. Next up, and this is this episode two of this podcast, that's how important I rated it, is start saying no. You can say no to something you don't want to do. You need to realise that it's okay. Even if other people feel you are letting them down, take care of your energy and prioritise yourself. There's nothing worse than waking up 20 years down the line and realising that you've given all of your time and efforts and energy into achieving someone else's dreams and passions and you have nothing there for yourself. So start saying no to things and start doing things for yourself. And finally, educate yourself Read about victim mentality and how it affects your life. Consider seeking therapy. I've talked about therapy before in the show. Talking per- therapy is not very expensive. That's just where you'll sit down, you can brain dump yourself onto someone else. They'll listen, they might give you a bit of feedback. It is a worthwhile endeavour and it's much, much cheaper than it sounds. I've had my breaks down in, my breakdown in the past, mentioned it many times before. I'm laughing about it now. I wasn't then, I'll tell you. But uh, I first got therapy and it was £40 a session. I paid for three sessions, 120 quid, three sessions of one hour and it really stabilised where I was. So do consider therapy as well. And the more you educate yourself on this topic, the more likely you are to stay on track with your recovery and to avoid going back to your old way of thinking. And again, just speaking for myself, I can drift into that old way of thinking all too easily and I try and yank myself back out of it. So I want to talk to you once again now about high-level thinking. That's the ability we must all develop that allows us to work on our lives and careers at the same time that we are living and working in them. I talked about it in episode one of this series. I also want to talk a little bit about the media and social media and how if we're not careful, we could find ourselves in an endless loop of victim-based thinking as we are unwittingly manipulated by individuals and groups that derive benefits from it. Every single day, the media shoves stories about this sort of thing down our throats, and every single day we see what I'll refer to as thought leaders in these areas passionately push their opinions on how this group or that group are being oppressed. And if you see a discussion on television these days where one party is debating with another, you will usually find, 
always find really that the producers deliberately choose people for their chat shows and interviews that don't just have conflicting opinions but who represent the biting hard extremes of the topic at hand. This makes for good television but it doesn't necessarily represent reality. And I've noticed what I have struggled to describe as race baiting on social media and in the media but that term never quite sat right with me in what I was trying to identify. I mean, race baiting definitely exists, it happens, and we should be aware of it. But there is something else going on out there which, for a considerable time, I couldn't tangibly identify. And a few months ago, I went looking for a better description. The term I found at that time was race hustling. It was coined to describe those individuals who project themselves into the media spotlight as spokespersons whenever there is an alleged racial incident. Race hustlers are individuals who exploit racial tensions and situations to serve their own interests. And hustlers don't just exist to exploit racial tensions either. Every recognisable victim group has its own often self-appointed hustlers. Hopefully you recognise this sort of thing that I'm talking about here. Um, Because I I found it hard to kind of pin down, but this is what I eventually came up with. And each victim group hustler will have another opposing hustler or two representing the other side of any argument or discussion, serving their own interests via their YouTube channel or whatever as well. Victim hustlers personally benefit, though, by creating amplifying and prolonging tensions in the world. Some of them are also clout chasers that I talked about last week, and they'll deliberately get into the middle of a shitstorm in order to receive financial benefit, reputation, or status. Now, please note here, I am not saying that racism, bigotry, and prejudice do not exist. Of course they do. But as these hustlers know that it is not in their best interests to reach a conclusion or amnesty they are never truly interested in achieving one. And please take everything these hustlers say and everything everything that's amplified as well by a press that wants you to be outraged and put you in a box of a victim subclass with a pinch of salt. Consider, I, I ask you, <laughs> this is the high-level thinking thing, consider what you're being fed and ask yourself, is this reality? Is this true? Or even, is there some other game in play here? High-level thinking will allow you to do this. Self-pity is easily the most destructive of the non-pharmaceutical narcotics. It is addictive, gives momentary pleasure, and separates the victim from reality. John Gardner, unquote. Now, I am no debater, by the way, and I found this episode really difficult and frankly a little bit dangerous to put together. I'm I'm well aware that I may provoke the wrath of others by stating these things, but I have to remind myself that I do this show to try and help others, and this was a topic I felt I couldn't put off any longer. I'm just trying to put into words some of the crazy stuff that I see happening these days, and... I'm going to say something now which I hope will help, but it's a little direct. The world is an unfair place. And if you feel something is keeping you back and you can't overcome overcome it, then the straight, honest thing, a bit of advice I've got to say here, is that you just need to get over it. This is a world of double standards where rules or principles are unfairly applied in different ways to different people or groups. Some people will get ahead of you because they are in a different class or because they know influential people or because they are simply good looking and that doesn't get talked about very often but that's definitely true. If you support the wrong football team here in Scotland it won't just keep you back, it could possibly even get you a kicking and that is a reality here. You can't do anything about it though so just let it go instead of getting bogged down in the misery that comes with thinking you are a victim just try instead to focus on being better because no matter your background your skin color your culture or whatever if you work harder than everyone else if you produce better work than everyone else and if you are focused and driven more than everyone else then you are going to be very difficult to ignore. And the follow-on to that 
would be the success you're looking for. And my answer to anyone blaming someone or something else for your failures is be better. Don't be a victim. We need to stop playing privilege or oppression Olympics because we'll never get anywhere until we find more effective ways of talking through difference. We should be able to say, this is my truth and have that truth stand without a hundred clamouring voices shouting and giving the impression that multiple truths cannot coexist. Roxanne Gay, unquote. Let me just say that character, not circumstance, makes the person. So I urge you not to become participants in the Oppression Olympics. Just do your own thing and drive forward to achieve your own goals. Victim mentality is a learned behaviour, as I said before. It's something you learn in a social environment, but you have got the power to overcome it. It, it takes courage to speak against the woke brigade and all that, but it's easy to step out of it and have your own thoughts if you choose to. And it's easy to take control of your life rather than coasting along. Taking action is the surefire first step to beating victimhood. Your call to action today is to raise those antennae that you have inside you that help you to differentiate truth from hustle and to keep scanning for oppression and victim hustlers and tag them when they pop up. Recognising that you are perhaps blindly following someone just to reinforce your feelings of oppression and victimhood is a good start to getting yourself out there. Remember again those words of Dean Kuntz. But victimhood was seductive. It was a release from responsibility and caring. Fear would be transmuted into weary resignation. Failure would no longer generate guilt, but instead would spawn a comforting self-pity. Don't let that quote represent you. Take control and use your higher level of thinking to raise you up from the prison of victim mentality. Now, one last thing I want to add to this point was touched upon in my bullying episode, actually, which was, I think, in somewhere, somewhere like season four. And that point is that you should be aware that your headspace can become so tainted by victim mentality that you can become the oppressor yourself if you're not very careful. Playing the victim is the fabrication or exaggeration of victimhood for a variety of reasons, such as to justify abuse of others to manipulate others, or as a coping strategy, attention-seeking, or diffusion of responsibility. Manipulators often play the victim role by portraying themselves as victims of circumstances or someone else's behaviour in order to gain pity or sympathy or to evoke compassion and thereby get something from someone. Caring and conscientious people cannot stand to see anyone suffering, and the manipulator often finds it easy and rewarding to play on sympathy to get cooperation. Portraying yourself as a victim can be highly successful in obtaining goals over the short term, but this method tends to be less successful over time. And Wikipedia points out that, I quote, a victim's talent for high drama draws people to them like moths to a flame. Their permanent dire state brings out the altruistic motives in others. It is difficult to ignore constant cries for help, it says. In most instances, however, the help given is of a short duration. And like moths in a flame, helpers quickly get burned. Nothing seems to work to alleviate the victim's miserable situation. There is no movement for the better. Any efforts rescuers make are ignored, belittled or met with hostility. No wonder that the rescuers become increasingly frustrated. Unquote. I think that's a point well made too, uh, but the words of Lisa Simpson, daughter of Homer and Marge, might add a little bit more to it. If you can get someone fired, she says, for expressing their opinion, you're not the oppressed, you're the oppressor. That's my final warning there on the problems associated with victim mentality. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier, this was a tough episode to write. I've got to be honest, first half went well, second half, 
I referred to a few more things that were maybe film or creative creativity related. Some of you might be thinking, why is this called Film Pro Productivity? He's not talking about film. I did actually have quite a few things I said about uh, professional situations I'd been in, but I really think it, it became a bit sidetracky. And to be honest, I thought I, I, I was becoming a bit of a victim as I was, <laughs> as I was writing them down. So I ended up re-recording that second half and, and hopefully... Hopefully I've not offended too many people out there by this. I really am just trying to raise these topics because I think an awareness of them will help you to avoid them, get around them, uh, or overcome them, basically. Now, next week's episode is about regaining balance in your life, and it's, it's another short one. It's called Hungry, Angry, Lonely, Tired, and... It's a really useful lesson. I hope you have the time to tune in for that one. But let me finish today with some words from Harvey Firestein, who said, never be bullied into silence. Never allow yourself to be made a victim. Accept no one's definition of your life. Define yourself. Now take control of your own destiny. Keep on shooting, my friends. In whatever that means to you, keep on going. And join me next time for another exciting episode of Film Pro Productivity and Success. The music that you can hear right now is Adventures by Ehimitsu. And you can view the show notes for this episode on the official website, filmproproductivity.com. That's a full transcript, really, of what I've been saying here. You can also follow my personal accounts on Twitter and Instagram at fight underscore director or follow the show on Twitter at Film Pro Prod Pod or on Facebook at Film Pro Productivity. Please continue to support the show by listening in, subscribing, spreading the word and leaving an awesome review. Thanks very much.